My sister, Trisha Evans, was an ordinary woman who got an extraordinary disease, and she let it make her extraordinary. Four years ago, at the age of 40, Trisha started limping. Four months later, she was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. No, she was not an athlete, and it doesn't run in our families. She is no more likely to get it than you or me. ALS is the gradual loss of muscle control. Prognosis is three to five years. Within 13 months, Trisha was a quadriplegic. Throughout her journey, Trisha used the internet to send updates to her family and friends. I would like to share a few of her posts with you. This first post I'm going to read is from March 2013. First, a quick summary of the past year. Breathing became difficult, so Jim and I made the decision to prolong my time with my family with the help of a ventilator. I was able to be at home on the vent thanks to my amazing friends, nurses, and family. During this time, I lost the ability to swallow, speak, and the thing I'm missing most right now, the ability to smile. This past fall, I made the move to Prairie Rose. A year ago, like anyone, I was thinking, no way would I go to a nursing home. But here I am, and I'm here by my own choice. Everyone asks me, how do I get through it? This disease is unimaginable, but it's not like it happened overnight. Each loss was gradual and gave me time to mourn and adjust. Meanwhile, I got to witness the awesome, fantabulous people in our lives. She sounds pretty upbeat, doesn't she? What she doesn't mention is that the nursing home was an hour and a half away from her family and friends each way. She also doesn't mention how difficult communication was. All she had were her eyes, so she would look to the right for yes and to the left for no, and we would use an alphabet board. Imagine the thoughts in your head as a bucket full of water. For most of us, it's pretty easy to pour that bucket out. But for Trisha, she could only dispense her thoughts one drop at a time, one letter at a time. Without tone or voice inflection, facial expressions or body language, it was hard to tell when she was joking. <laughs> because she still had her sense of humor, but she could still be a bitch, too. <laughs> I said she was extraordinary, not perfect. <laughs> a couple of months later in May, Trisha recorded these thoughts. Waiting, hoping, and trusting. As you can imagine, I do a lot of waiting. I wait each week for Sunday, the day Jim and the girls come. I'm also waiting to die. It could be today, next month, or five years from now. I wish I knew. Do I even want to live like this? Heaven sounds like a pretty nice place. I'm hoping Kelly and Sarah, her daughters, are doing okay without me. I'm hoping Jim is not too stressed. I'm hoping for a miracle. I want to walk out of here, go back to being a mom. I'm trusting God to take care of my family. Somehow, he has a plan, and I will trust him with my life. A few months later, she wrote about her not-so-good days. Some days I feel so sad, like how can I put up with all this shit for one more day? So I ask for an Ativan, <laughs> listen to my music, and cry. But some days I find myself thinking, I love this place. It feels like a big family. The staff there was amazing. They took great care of her. The difference between these two feelings all comes down to peace. Peace to me means faith, giving up control, and not worrying. In November, Trisha was able to go home for a weekend. Here's what she wrote. My favorite place is home. Going home is quite an ordeal, but it's all worth it. I always wanted a, a house that was newer and bigger, with nicer furniture and no clutter. Does that sound familiar? 
but none of that matters to me anymore. I've learned that joy doesn't come from things. The best parts were Sarah dancing, Kelly playing the clarinet, and Jim playing his guitar and singing a song he just wrote for me. These are things I used to take for granted. Peace and joy. Trisha had that. Even lying in her hospital bed in a nursing home, she had peace and joy. She figured out that gratitude, being thankful for what you do have, brings trust and hope. And that trust and hope brings peace and joy. Yeah, I want that. Six weeks ago, my sister died. She was losing control of her eyes and did not want to be locked in. She got excited to go to heaven. She never wanted to give up, but decided it was time to let go. Thank you for letting me honor her tonight by sharing her story. When you are walking through the valley, don't let your crises be a slide down into a dark pit of despair, but stepping stones to the mountaintops where joy and peace and hope are. Let your extraordinary circumstances make you extraordinary. Thank you.